Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'm going to be talking to you guys about selection areas. This is the advanced tutorial for selection areas. I did a basics version prior to this tutorial so check that out if you haven't already. So essentially this is part two of two. And of course, as always, I'll be using the latest version again for this tutorial, GIMP 2.10.8, which is the latest version at the time of this recording. But of course, before we get into all that, I want to direct you guys over to my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always, we have tons of GIMP video and text tutorials on here, so definitely check those out. You can also enroll in my GIMP 2.10 photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher on Udemy. And of course, I'll include a discount link to that in the description. And you could support our channel and help us grow by becoming a patron on Patreon. And I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So here is one of the photos I'll be using for today's tutorial. I downloaded this for free from Pixabay. Of course, I'll include a link to this and the other photo I'll be using in this tutorial. So here I have GIMP open. This is again GIMP 2.10.8. So I did an introduction or the basics for selection areas in my last tutorial, as I mentioned. So one of the first things I said in that tutorial was that selection areas in their simplest form can be thought of as containers that isolate parts of an image for editing. So I didn't get too deep into that concept just because I didn't want to get too advanced for that basics tutorial. But actually in a more complex sense, selection areas are actually very similar to a channel, such as the red, green, blue, or alpha channels with each pixel associated with a selection area containing a value between 0 and 255. So let me grab my rectangle select tool again and draw my selection area. And I mentioned in that first tutorial that this is called the contour line right here. And I said that everything outside the contour line is not selected and everything inside the contour line is selected. It's actually a bit more complex than that. Yes, usually everything in here is fully selected and everything outside of here is unselected. But as I just mentioned, there are actually values between 0 and 255 for areas that are partially selected. So a pixel with a value of 0 as it relates to a selection area will be a pixel that is unselected. And right now that is everything outside my selection area. On the other hand, a pixel with a value of 255 is fully selected. Again, that's everything inside the selection area right now. But there are pixels with a value between 0 and 255, and these are pixels that are partially selected. And we're going to be going through that a little bit in this tutorial, and I'll show you a few examples of that. And again, from a technical sense, contour lines don't just separate pixels that are fully selected or fully unselected. They actually technically separate pixels that are more than half selected from pixels that are less than half selected. So those are pixels with around a value of 127 and below. Those are going to be pixels that are outside the contour lines and then pixels with the value of around 128 and above are going to be pixels inside the contour lines from a technical standpoint. So going back to selections in their simplest form, when you draw a selection area like this one and you just draw it in the default setting. So down here under the rectangle select tool options, I've got all the defaults really set up here. Uh, if not, you can always come over here and click to reset to the default value. So let's do that right there. And then let me just draw this selection area again. So the default doesn't have the highlight option checked. Let me just check that for the sake of demonstration. But everything else is set to the default values. So this is going to draw a selection area with sharp edges. And by that I mean there's no partial selection going on around the contour lines here. So everything again inside is fully selected. Everything outside is unselected. And I want to demonstrate this using what's called the quick mask. This is a tool that I demonstrated in a few other tutorials. Uh, but if I come over here and click this option right here, it's going to toggle my quick mask on or off. So here we have our quick mask on. And you can see here that the edges of this are crisp. They're sharp. If I hold control and zoom in, you'll see there is a strict edge here. Uh, a strict boundary between what is unselected, which is going to be everything that is overlaid in red and what is selected, which is everything that does not have the red overlay. So the quick mask is a great way to demonstrate this concept of partial transparency. Let me come over here and turn the quick mask off. If I hit control I and invert my selection area and then toggle that quick mask on again, you'll see it's going to switch which area has the red overlay. So again, all of this stuff right here has a pixel value of 255 because it is fully selected and everything inside the red here has a value of zero because it is fully unselected. So let me toggle that quick mask off again and I'll hit control I. By the way, you can hit shift Q to toggle the quick mask on and off as well. That's the shortcut key for the quick mask. 
So let me draw a selection area with partial transparency. So I'll hit Control Shift A. So this time before I draw my selection area, I'm gonna check the feather edges option. And what this does is it creates a transition along the contour line from a fully selected area to an unselected area. And the larger the radius you set right here, the longer the transition will take. So let's set a radius of, let's go with the round of 50 right now. And I just dragged the slider here so it's not exact. But now I'm going to draw my rectangle select tool. And right now, the only way you could really tell that the feathered edges option is working is that it has rounded corners right here. But let me hold control and zoom out. That's not really fully giving us the big picture of what's happening here. So let me come over here and toggle the quick mask on again. This time you can see the quick mask does not have those sharp edges or does not have a hard edge where that selection area or the contour lines are separating the fully selected areas from the unselected areas. So if I hold control and zoom in, you can see now that there is some partial transparency going on here and that is denoted by the red overlay sort of losing its opacity right here. So it goes from fully opaque in terms of how opaque this overlay is to full transparency here and revealing just the normal image. So the feathered edges here are partial transparency. And if I toggle that quick mask on again, you could see that the quick mask actually is happening or the uh, feathering is actually happening along this contour line. So it's gonna start around right here and that is where this is fully unselected. And then this is all partial transparency right here. And this is where it starts to become fully selected again. So I'll hit Shift Q to toggle that and you guys can see that going on here. And then I'm gonna come up here towards the top and hit Shift Q again and you can see also right here there is that feathering of the edges happening or that partial transparency. So I'll hit Shift Q again and we'll go back to our selection area. I'll hold Control and use my mouse wheel to zoom out. So one quick note here, if I hold Control Shift A to select none and I uncheck the feathered edges option and then I draw this rectangle first, if I come over here and then check the feathered options after the fact, it's not going to feather the selection here. So if I toggle my quick mask on, you'll see even though I have feathered edges checked, we still have that sharp edge here. So the feathered edges option is only going to work if you check that before you draw the rectangle, although there is a way to feather the edges after the fact. So let me turn my quick mask off again. So if I've drawn my selection area already and I wanna feather this after the fact, I can go to select feather and now I could choose how much I wanna feather this by. So in this case, I can go with 50 pixels and I'll click okay. And now you'll see those rounded corners again. And then if I hit shift Q on my keyboard, you'll see now we have that feathering going on here, the partial transparency or the fully unselected areas transitioning into the fully selected areas. I'll hit shift Q again to toggle that quick mask off. On the other hand, if I want to sharpen this back up after I feathered it, I can go to select sharpen and what that'll do is it'll sharpen my edges back it'll turn off the feathered edges so if i hit shift q you can see now we have sharp edges here one thing you'll notice though is that this will come with rounded corners now it's not going to sharpen this back up and create a, a sharp rectangle here or a perfect rectangle it's going to create a rectangle with rounded corners instead but it will have the sharp edges here now instead of having that feathering going on so i'll hit shift q again to turn off the quick mask and i'll hit Control shift a to deselect that and I'll hold control and my mouse wheel to zoom out. All right, so next let's say we want to create areas of partial transparency that are the entire selection area that we drew. So let me come over here to my other image and I'm just going to click and drag this and I'm going to release my mouse right here and that's going to drop this image on our other image. Then I'm going to just, let's use the Unified Transform tool and I'm going to use this to scale my image down and then also move this into place. And I'm just going to loosely add this to our photo here. All right, so now we have our second image in here. Let's say for whatever reason we wanna select part of this image and then we want to turn that selection area into partial transparency. So I'll start by coming over here to one of my selection tools, which is the lasso tool. And for this example, I'm going to pretty loosely draw a lasso around this girl. Um, I'm not gonna take my time or anything, so it might look a little sloppy. But let's say I draw this lasso here i'll connect the ends hit the enter key so now we have our selection area again let's say i want to create partial transparency within the selection area what i can do is i can go to select float and that is going to put our selection area on its own floating selection layer 
So let me hide our uh, layer that we dropped our image onto there, the dropped buffer layer. So now we have this floating selection layer here. Now what I can do is I can come over here to the opacity slider and I could slide this opacity around. I can't see the selection area right now, but what I can do is I can click on this floating selection layer and I can either anchor it, which is going to apply the floating selection to the layer below, or I could put this on its own new layer, which is what I'm gonna do. So I'll click on this new layer and that will add this floating selection area to its own layer. And then you can see it's also given this layer the opacity that we set while we were dragging the opacity slider. So basically now I can just drag this opacity around and that is going to give our selection area some partial transparency there. One thing you'll note though is that even though we did give the selection area partial transparency, it's actually happening on its own layer. So it's not technically happening inside of our selection area, but we were able to give that selection area partial transparency by floating it onto its own floating selection area and then adding that new floating selection area to its own layer. And let me just go back and show you the anchoring option. So if I click on this, and then I hit anchor. Basically what that's going to do is it's going to force that selection area onto the layer below, which was that dropped buffer layer where we originally brought this image in. So it's going to add that cutout area back into the area we cut it out from in the original image. So it does give that selection area partial transparency and then just sort of inserts it back into the original area. But you can see our selection area is gone now after we've anchored this onto its original layer. And let me point out one other thing with this technique here when you're trying to cut out a selection area and give it partial transparency. And that is, let me go ahead and delete this layer here. So I've got our original girl layer, the girl kayaking on the water here. So let me perform the same task with her and she doesn't have another image below her. So let's see what happens when I cut this out. I'll hit the enter key. I'll go to select float. And then I'll put that selection on its own floating layer. Let me add that to a new layer. So now here we have our selection area that we cut out. We can give it partial transparency, but you'll see that below this, instead of there being transparency, there's a color. This color is actually our background color that we have set right here. So if I hide this, you can see that these two colors are the same. The reason this is happening is because I have not added an alpha channel to this image right here. So basically I do not have a layer of transparency set for this image. So instead of having transparency below this, it's showing up as a background color. So let me hit control Z and just back this up to before we created the selection. So before I cut the selection out, what I want to do is right click on here, go to add alpha channel. That'll add transparency to this. Now I can go to select float and I will put that floating selection object onto its own layer and then I'll decrease the opacity and now you'll see we get that checkerboard pattern which denotes transparency. So that's just a quick note there and I'll hit control Z and just back up. So I showed you guys how to cut out an object with a selection area using the select float option but if you wanted to cut out an object using a more non-destructive way what you could do is you could use a layer mask instead so I can come over here right click and go to add layer mask and under initialize layer mask two, I could check the selection option. And then when I click add, you'll see that that is going to add a layer mask to my image, which is going to mask everything outside of the selection area and only keep what's inside the selection area, which is our cutout shape. So now we could add this to another image. So for example, I can click and drag this over here and drop it. And that is just going to drop our image on here as a cutout. But the cool thing about a layer mask and with it being non-destructive is I can come over here right click and I can either disable this layer mask which is going to turn the layer mask off temporarily or if I just wanted to revert this back to the original image I could right click on here and go to delete layer mask and that'll just get rid of the layer mask entirely and revert that back to our original image. So I can also grow or shrink the selection area so if I wanted to make the selection area a little bit larger I can go to select grow and here it allows you to grow the selection area by however much you want and you can also change the units here. So I'll just grow this by let's say 25 pixels and I'll click OK. So that has gone ahead and grown our selection area. I can also shrink this so I can go to select shrink and I'll shrink this by 50 and we'll keep this set to pixels and I'll click OK. So now that has shrunk our selection area. So that's just a pretty useful tool when I want to create effects with our selection area. Or if maybe you drew a selection area that's maybe a little bit too small or a little bit too large, then you can adjust the size of that selection area after you've drawn it using those grow or shrink options. 
So I'll hit Control Shift A to deselect that. And before I move on from the shrink and grow features, let me just come over here to my rectangle select tool. I'm just gonna draw another selection here with my rectangle. And I have the feather edges option checked over here. So that's why these are rounded. But if I hit Control I on my keyboard and invert my selection area, and then I come over here to select grow, it's not going to grow the selection area right here because this is not what our selection area is anymore. It's what's going on outside. So everything in between our two sets of marching ants, that's what's selected. So when I grow my selection area, it's actually going to shrink this rectangle inside here. So this is going to move inward. And the reason for that is because this area right here is the area that's growing. So that causes this selection area inside here to shrink. So I'll just, uh, let's, grow this by 50 pixels and click OK. So you'll see that will shrink this area right here. And the reason being that this selection area right here is the area that's growing. And then on the other hand, if I go to select shrink, again, it's not going to shrink this area, it's going to shrink this area. So it's going to make this middle area larger. So I'll click OK. And you'll see it also shrunk the outside edges here. So this area shrunk in and this area in the middle shrunk in, creating this smaller selection area here. So I'll hit Control Shift A to deselect that. And you guys will remember from my last tutorial that Control A is the shortcut key for select all. And the marching ants going around the outside border of my image indicate that everything within this image right now is selected. And let me just come over here and I'm gonna change the name of this to border because I'm gonna demonstrate another feature of the selection areas. And that is that you can create a border from your selection areas. And I'll do that by going to select border and right here, it's going to ask me to create a border style. So I'm gonna set this to, let's go with 25 pixels. And I'll set my border style here to smooth. There's a few other options in here, including hard and feathered. And I'm going to keep this selected areas continue outside the image unchecked. And I'll click OK. And what that has done is it's created a border from my selection area. So remember, we went to select all. And because the entire outside border of our image had the marching ants or the selection area, what it did was it created another selection area, 25 pixels outside of that first selection area. And what that did is created a border. So now we have a cool border going around the outside of my image. And I can fill this in with the color. So if I grab my bucket fill tool, let me just hit the D key on my keyboard. That's going to reset my colors to black and white. And then I'm just going to fill this in with my foreground color, which is black. And that was on my border layer. And so now we have a black border going around our image. I'll hit Control Shift A to select none. And so there is our quick and easy border that we created using that select border effect. So one last thing I wanna demonstrate for you guys before I let you go is that there is something called the selection editor. And you can access that by going to select selection editor. And that'll pull your selection editor up here as a dockable dialog. Usually it'll show up over here under layers, channels, paths, undo. So it'll show up right next to your undo history. And what your selection editor does is it displays your selection area that you have drawn and that you're working on. So if I come over here and I grab my rectangle select tool and I draw a rectangle, and this one again still has the feathered edges, this is going to display your selection area relative to the size of your entire composition. So you can see that these two objects here relate to one another. And you have a set of options down here for your selection area. So you can come over here to select everything or select all. You can deselect everything. So this is going to unselect everything or basically go to select none. So I'll click on that to demonstrate. And this is imperfect. Sometimes it doesn't fully erase everything going on in here. But I'll hit Control Z to bring that back up. So you also have the invert selection option here, and then you can save the selection to a channel. You can also click the selection to path option, and that is useful when you want to save your selection that you drew. So let's say you drew this and you wanna come back to it later. You can click this option, and that is going to save our selection shape to a path. So if I come over here to my paths dialog, and I unhide this path, you'll see if I hit Control Shift A, our selection area has now been converted to a path. So we can always come back later and convert that path back to a selection and then we have our selection area back again. So that's useful when you've deselected your selection area but you wanna come back and bring that selection area back up and use it for something else. I'll just come over here and hide our path and I'll come back over here to our selection area. So that selection area that we created from our path does not have feathered edges as you could tell by the selection editor here. And a quick note, if you hold shift and click on that selection of path option, you're gonna get a bunch of advanced settings here that you can tweak or mess around with. 
I'll try to get to a separate tutorial on what all of these settings do. But I'll just hit cancel for now. Just know if you shift click on this, you get a bunch of extra options. And then the last option over here is to paint along the selection outline. So if I click on that, that gives you the option to stroke your selection. So you can choose from the options here and it's going to use your foreground color over here if you choose solid color or it'll use whatever pattern you have currently selected. I'll just go with solid color, hit stroke, and then you'll see if I hit Control Shift A that our selection outline now has a stroke going on around it. I'll hit Control Z and Control Z again to delete that stroke. And then I'll hit Control Shift A to deselect that area and you'll see that the selection area over here has disappeared from our selection editor. If I click on the selection editor, it's actually going to select all. So that's just another quick tidbit there about the selection editor. I'm gonna hit Control Shift A to deselect that and then I'm gonna come over here and I'm just going to close that selection editor tab and come back over here to our layers tab. So as I mentioned in the GIMP selection areas basics tutorial, I'm not gonna go over all of these selection tools in this tutorial because I do go over those tools in the two hour GIMP basics tutorial that I have up on my channel. So I do recommend you check that out if you wanna know more about the selection tools. But that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you guys liked it. If you did, please subscribe to our channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. You can also visit my website at daviesmediadesign.com. You can enroll in our best-selling GIMP photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher on Udemy. And you could support our channel and help us grow by becoming a patron on Patreon. And I'll include a link to that as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.